Welcome to Desk Geek. No, your eyes do not deceive you. This is, in fact, Mac OS here on a Mac Mini, a 2020 Mac Mini. I also have a 2020 MacBook Air. I also have an iPhone. So I am in the Apple ecosystem. Now, many of you know me as the person who does Destination Linux podcast. I'm a huge Linux fanatic. So what am I doing playing in the Apple garden here? This is forbidden space. This is the forbidden apple that should not be eaten, but here I am. I know it's scary, but hang on with me here because there's a whole reason behind this. The core reason I wanted to give Apple a really good shot, a real shot to try to replace my entire workflow is to really understand what this operating system is and what this ecosystem of Apple's is and what it's not. Because you can listen to people, you can listen to one a hardware person go out there that have millions of subscribers and they talk about, oh, Apple's overpriced and blah, blah, blah. Then they show you around their studio and shockingly, they have Apple servers sitting there. They have Apple computers sitting there and their main device is an Apple phone, but they'll go along with the community and say, yeah, yeah, it's, o it's overpriced. I can't believe it. So there's something there when you look at all the major tech channels that they're utilizing a lot of them, Apple products, in order to do their editing, in order to do their video productions, in order to do their audio productions, many bands and things like that, especially those that are starting out on their own will love the Apple ecosystem for production of music. Writers, of course, when you're at Starbucks and you order your uh, triple cappuccino, frappuccino uh, thing that's venti, and all of that, you want people to know you're writing a book, so you're gonna pull out your Apple there. Uh, there's a lot of people who utilize and love Apple. There are developers and programmers. That's one of the things that triggered this. I've been heavily, heavily involved in Python lately, or trying to heavily learn Python, which takes me forever, but that's not the point. A lot of people in Python, a lot of the colleges, a lot of the professors that are obviously very good at Python, have used it for years, prefer the Apple ecosystem. And I thought there's got to be something here in all these years I've been missing. Now, I repair Apple products all the time for friends, family, and folks that my wife finds randomly in a line at Best Buy to come bring over to repair it for cheaper. I don't know why she does that, but she's like, hey, you know, don't listen to them. My husband will do it for free. Anyways, the point is that I'm familiar with Apple, but I've never tried to use it to replace my entire workflow. So that's what we're going to do in this series of videos. We're going to do some unboxing. I'm going to show you the video of me upgrading the Mac Mini. I did specifically make sure that I picked devices out of Apple's ecosystem that had some repairability score. One of my main issues with Apple, which we'll get into in a later video, is the repairability factor and, of course, digital divide issues and open source. So we'll get into those problems as well. We're going to talk about the good, bad, the ugly. All of it's going to be covered here in the series, and we're going to see how I get along with my workflow. Now, obviously, I'm still going to keep utilizing open source software. It's extremely important to me. So a lot of the software that I've installed like OBS, Audacity, and other things are oh, Joplin, other open source software that I utilized over in Linux that I brought over here in Mac. There will be some exceptions to that, like iMovie that comes with Mac OS. I will be utilizing that to edit videos and things in there. So I think it should be a fun series. If you're um, triggered by this, uh, sorry, I like technology and I'm going to explore every ecosystem out there. But I get it because a lot of people know me as the Linux guy that switched to Linux four years ago and absolutely loves it. And I still do. And one of the cool things about Mac OS is it has things like parallels in which I can still utilize the Linux ecosystem in it. Uh, so this isn't necessarily a permanent change. Maybe. We'll see as we go along. I doubt it. But certainly, I think by the end of this series, we'll have some more respect and understanding of Apple, the ecosystem, what it provides and what it doesn't. So for the first video... You kind of get the introduction. The second videos will start getting into more details of how my weeks are going. And we're going to do an unboxing right now of the MacBook Air 2020. We'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly with this device. I actually really love it. And so we'll talk about that as well. And you know how much hardware I have. Got the AMD Ryzen 3900X Beast. I have the AMD laptops. I have Intel laptops. I've got all kinds of different machine servers in this house and things. So we'll do a lot of comparisons between the devices I have and see why Apple is so popular. Why do people love it so much? 
there's a lot of good reasons that I found in the last few weeks playing with this stuff, and I can't wait to share those with you. So now let's take a look at the MacBook Air 2020. A little bit of ASMR for you. You know, one of the favorite things of getting a new project is the ASMR factor of ripping off the new plastic. And so there's going to be certain parts in this video where I play the regular audio instead of my voice over here so that you can hear that beautiful part. I mean, one of the amazing things about a MacBook, about any Apple product, is the quality of the packaging. It really does make a difference. It sounds silly but they put so much work into making sure the display of the packaging is so unique, so beautiful that you feel like, well, that money you just spent, even though it's a lot of it, was well spent. Even this box here, all right? You just kind of untuck the corners and that reveals the box for you to easily slide out. Everything is thought of, everything is well designed. Now, when you look at the box itself here, it's obviously very clean. It's got a nice wrap around it, but it looks like a high quality product. It feels really heavy. The box itself, even though the MacBook Air is extremely light, you can see it's a simple visual of what you're getting. I've got the, this is the version that I purchased, 2560 by 1600, 1.1 gigahertz dual core i3, which I thought was gonna be super slow, but it's snappy. It's really snappy and fast with Mac OS, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabyte PCIe based SSD. And they put that really fast storage in MacBook Airs, which is one of the reasons why it's super snappy. The Intel Iris Plus graphics, two Thunderbolt 3 USB-Cs. One of my complaints, they need more ports, period. The dongle thing is, you know, a meme for a reason, but USB-C at least because of the 40 gigabytes per second allows you to do a lot of things with that connection. So your dongles can run a lot of devices well, but why do we have to have a dongle to begin with to do things like put in a micro SD card and stuff that we'd be doing with these devices. But either way, let's get into the packaging and kind of show you this experience here. And I'm sure a couple of people are fainting because I'm taking a knife to this packaging, but I'm being careful. I'm being gentle with this because, well, one of the amazing things about Apple computers is the resale value. The resale value is so good. In fact, it was much cheaper for me really at the end of the day to just get a brand new MacBook Air than to purchase one used. I mean, the price difference was $150, $200 and I was getting a more up-to-date system that is an advantage of these machines. You do spend a lot of money, but you can get a lot of money back if you're somebody who resells versus if you go buy some of the latest Windows laptops out there, you're going to usually lose hundreds and hundreds of dollars at least the moment you buy it. And six months down the road, you're going to lose more than that. I know I buy and sell on eBay constantly. One of the things I've always done is purchase these Apple products that are broken, repair them and resell them because the resale value is just so high. And that's just a product of the cost. Now, this particular device cost me around the $900 mark. I think with taxes and everything, it was just a little over a thousand dollars for this laptop, which is still pretty pricey. Thankfully, I got a nice bunch of gift cards that I used against this from my work. So I didn't spend all that out of my own money necessarily. It was kind of gift money. You can see everything really well done. You got your USB-C charging cable there. You have, of course, your manual that has your stickers and things in it. The USB-C cable I'll show you in a minute. It's really big too. It's really long, which is awesome. Underneath you have your AC adapter so that you can plug it in and charge it. So everything you really need for this device is right there which is awesome, and it looks beautiful. You can't deny it. And now we're gonna do a little ASMR again. If you don't know what that is, don't look it up. Yeah, nobody does it better. Apple knows. They know that sound, that peeling, that crunching. They know what they're doing when they put this together. It's like those little poppy shipping things, the, the poppy air bubbles. They know what they're doing here. We're gonna do it again when we peel off the wrapping to the MacBook Air. Enjoy. Oh, 
so refreshing. It's so good. You know you like it. Don't deny it. Don't roll your eyes. It's beautiful. The thing you've got to give to the Mac products, this MacBook Air especially, the thinness, it fit in an envelope. It's absolutely light. It's gorgeous. Everything on it feels premium. It just has this incredible feeling. The keyboard itself, which we'll get into more of the specifics in other videos, is just out of this world. And of course, they changed up the keyboard in the 2020 version and brought back the butterfly keys just, or is it the magic key? I don't know what they call it. Who cares? Whatever it is, it's perfect. It's perfect typing experience that you're going to have on this that they didn't have in the prior ones. You get a super long USB-C cable, as I mentioned before, which is really welcome. Although, why did they get rid of the magnetic charger? The magnetic charger was so good. I wish you got the two USB-C ports because you need more ports and then had the magnetic charger. That way, if you kick the charger or you pulled, it automatically detached and you didn't knock things off the table. Remember they did all the advertising for that and then it just went away? What's with that? Apple folks, comment below. Let me know why get rid of the magnetic charger. But look, everything here is premium. It's first class. That's what Apple is known for. You have no cheap curves. You have no sharp edges. Everything was considered in the design here. And that's one of the things I will give a huge thumbs up to Apple for is that their products look gorgeous. Now, today, a lot of the Dells, a lot of the other PC manufacturers out there have come around and started making their devices look more beautiful and start having the unibody aluminum frames and not have the bending, but there's nothing like the trackpad on the MacBook. There's nothing like the keyboard, this particular keyboard especially. It's just absolutely beautiful. The setup process is very simple and easy. It's pretty typical for any standard operating system. I don't think they do anything especially great here, especially when it comes to what you'll see is your ability to transfer from your PC to your actual um, Mac, move the files over. That doesn't work in this screen. The only way it worked was after I had done the setup, I went back into it and it worked, but you'll see I get an error here in the message. So this is the first video. Again, introducing you to the concept of this series, also talking about the MacBook Air, but I have the Mac mini as well, which we're going to do the eGPU with and all kinds of fun things. So let me know in the comments below what you think. I know some of you aren't going to like it, but just follow me here. You may find something really interesting in the Mac OS ecosystem. Now, maybe you're not into Mac OS. That's fine. You don't have to be, but you should be into digital ocean. This episode, this entire channel, in fact, the entire destination Linux network is sponsored by the awesome folks at digital ocean. They offer the simplest, most developer-friendly cloud platform optimized to make managing and scaling apps easy with an intuitive API, multiple storage options, integrated firewalls, load balancers, and so much more. I set up a Django Python server just to learn more from the college classes that I was taking. I told you about my love for Python recently. DigitalOcean, it's one click in the marketplace to get that set up. You can get all this plus access to the world-class customer support for as little as $5 per month, a $5 droplet. But wait, there's more because they sponsor this. They're getting anybody who listens two months free with a $100 credit by just going to do.co slash DLN. That's two months free, $100 credit by going to do.co slash DLN. I love these folks over at DigitalOcean. Show them some love. Show them some support because they certainly show it to us. Check them out. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe and make them subscribe to this video.